Hey guys, today I'll be showing you how to colour grade your log footage in DaVinci Resolve using the ASUS workflow. So this works by converting a log input into a linear output, which makes colour grading a whole lot easier because you can see the image with accurate colours and accurate contrast right from the start. So this method works a lot better than LUTs and plugins that I've used in the past for grading log footage. I found that they either give you accurate colours or they give you good dynamic range but usually they don't give you both, they compromise in some way. But with the ASUS workflow, you actually get all the dynamic ranges you recorded in your log footage, which is not noise, and you get to use that. Also, right from the start, the colors are very accurate, and this makes color grading much easier because you don't have to waste time trying to tune the colors up just to match what you had at the scene. I've attached some log footage you can download, and you can use that to follow along with and it'll help you understand what I'm doing in this video. So we'll switch over to DaVinci Resolve now and get this tutorial done. So first we're going to be importing our footage into DaVinci Resolve. I'm only importing one clip at a time so it doesn't run too slow. This whole process requires a lot of computer power so just be patient with it. Go to project settings and choose the resolution to match your footage. Then go down to Color Science and change this to ACES. Then go to Color Management and change your input to match the log profile you use to record your footage. Choose the output depending on your requirements. Most people will be using Rec. 709, but there are many other options for HDR and any other requirements. Now go over to the edit tab and drag the clip onto the timeline. Already you can see the footage looks decent, just overexposed slightly. I'm using a MacBook Pro with 16 gigs of RAM and dedicated graphics and it still doesn't run smooth or it doesn't play back smooth either. So don't worry about this, it's normal unless you've got a very powerful computer. Now we're going over to the color tab to make the adjustments. Select color wheels and then click on two near the bottom to get the exposure tools. I always expose my log footage to the right so I bring down the highlights as low as possible to preserve highlight detail. And I bring down the overall exposure by reducing the gain a little bit. For this shot the colors are a little warm so we can cool down the white balance by changing the temperature in the negative direction. For this only make small adjustments as we're not dealing with raw footage so large adjustments will look bad. And we can also adjust the tint to change the colours depending on the scene. MD is mid-tone contrast which works in a similar way to clarity. Colour boost is like saturation, don't push this too far as it can introduce colour noise. And for shadow adjustments you only want to bring this down, moving this up will add a lot of noise to your footage. So we can make all the basic adjustments using the gain wheel to control exposure, HL to control highlights, shad to control shadows, Temp to adjust white balance, Tint to adjust the tint, MD to adjust the clarity or midtone contrast, and Col to adjust the saturation. While we're making exposure adjustments, we can use the histogram to keep an eye on the exposure. Generally the peak should be near the middle, but this will vary depending on the shot. If the peak is to the far right or the far left, then it's overexposed or underexposed and you need to make exposure adjustments accordingly. And for the export settings, select custom. I'll be using this footage in Final Cut Pro after this, so I'm going to be using the QuickTime format. And for codec, I'll be using 42HQ for the highest quality. If you want to save space, you can use 42 or 42LT. And for advanced settings, you can leave data levels on auto if you don't plan on making exposure adjustments afterwards. If you want to get all the dynamic range for adjustments in the next editor you'll be using, then you can use full. Then click add to render queue and select where you want the exported video to go. After this I bring the footage into Final Cut Pro if I want to add a particular grade to it, but if I just want the footage to look realistic and as I saw it at the scene then I just leave it at this because it's much easier to grade in Final Cut Pro for me because I've been using that for a long time 
and I find DaVinci Resolve a bit harder, but I'm sure if you understand how it works, it won't be hard. So thank you for watching today, and I'll see you in the next video.